things. All right, so we got uh, Periscope and Facebook Live going. I haven't I haven't taught from two two platforms in a minute. That's been a while. That has been a while. All praise to Most High, man. Hey, Esau uses technology for all kind of evil. Most High using it to get his word out. That's right. That's right. We're gonna start in a couple seconds, y'all. Um, being that I logged into Periscope first, um, just giving Facebook Live a couple seconds to uh, to sign in to sign in. Costa mm -hmm. Rica presente. Damn, Costa Rica present. Dag on. I'm trying to tell you, man. This word is going out. This word is going out. You don't mean Costa Rica, Brooklyn, do you? <laughs> I hope it's Costa Rica, the country. Okay, all right. All praise. <laughs> all praise. All praise. This word. Hey, I remember this this guy, man. I used to um, real cool dude, man. His, his name was what's his name? Wally. Wally was from Costa Rica, man. But Wally was darker than me. That's how big. Wally was darker than me, and I'm and I'm dark. Wally was darker than me, man. He was real, real, real. I, I, it was way before the truth, but older, older brother. He was he was an old man. He was an older man at the time, but real, real good, uh, real good brother, man. So if you a hey, so sis from Costa Rica, if you know Wally. <laughs> Tell him I said show. Because <laughs> he actually, yeah, he he moved. No, no, he he moved to Florida. He wasn't in Costa Rica, but he's from Costa Rica though. All right, y'all. Um, yeah, shalom, everyone. Most high, shalom, most high, in Christ bless. Can't hear. Dang. Hold on. I'll try to. I'll I'll speak a little louder. I'll speak louder. Volume is mm -hmm. low. Volume. Okay, better now. Okay, yeah, because I'm a little um. Say Costa Rica could be blue black. You ain't right. Um. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll just. Yeah. I wasn't close enough. All right. Um. I'll just speak a little louder. Um. Yeah. I had to. I. Hey. I hijacked my daughter's tablet. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't charge that to me. Um. You know, to make sure I got both platforms going. So all praise to the most high. So let's get started. We're gonna set up the prayers. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Sisters, cover your heads, brothers, uncover your heads. Ah. Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, dear Lord, your servant humbly comes before thee, Father God. We're asking for your mercy, forgiveness of our sins, and the sins of our forefathers. Dear Lord, please incline thine ear, dear Lord, to hear the prayers of thy servants, Father God, and not turn away. But dear Lord, I pray that you purge us of our wickedness, dear Lord, cleanse us of our iniquities, dear Lord, that we may serve thee, dear Lord. Let us be better servants unto thee, Father God. We pray, dear Lord, for that strength that we may keep thy commandments in all things. Father God, for we desire to glorify thee. Dear Lord, we pray that you strengthen us to do your work in your vineyard. No matter how large or how small the job, we, we ask that you prepare us, dear Lord, for thy work. Father God, we pray that you send more laborers, Father God. Purge the body of leaven, Father God. All those who desire to have secret plots, Father God, and, and, and pronounce evil against us, dear Lord, we pray that you disappoint them, Father God. We pray that you continue to bless leadership as they travel, Bless their houses and their families that are behind waiting their return, Father God. We pray that you strengthen them to push the gospel into the four corners of the earth, dear Lord. We thank you for this mighty work you've commissioned IUIC to do, Israel to do, Father God. And we pray you continue to guide us on that, Father God. Protect them. Protect them. Send your angels around them, dear Lord, for they in other countries, dear Lord, and allow them safe return. Father God, we pray you bless the sick among us. Bless the lowly in spirit. Lord, we ask you to increase our faith, dear Lord. And let us not waver. For in all things we glorify thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. 
I'm Captain Shamaya. With me, I have Officer you. Officer Twelve. Twelve. Shalom, shalom. Um. So you know, usually Fridays is uh Captain Hoshaya on um our daily bread. Um, filling in for the mighty captain. He's uh they're traveling internationally right now to do the work of the Lord. So send up prayers to ask the Most High to bless both them, the bishops. Other captain, Captain Isaac is their cap. Other captains that are traveling, as well as the officers, so on and so forth, and pray that the Most High. Um, uh, give me that. Give me Colossians four and three before we get started. Colossians four and three. This this should this should some this should this should be in our prayers quite often, <clears throat> and I want in Second Corinthians next. But go ahead, Colossians chapter four verse three. Uh -huh. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance. So now, that's something we should pray all the time, that the Lord opens up a door of utterance, meaning giving us the opportunity to teach the gospel, okay? Where we can, uh, whether, it be, whether it be setting up camp, whether it be going into schools to teach, whether it be uh, uh, just any avenue possible, newspapers, uh, radio tv whatever it is we always should pray that the lord opens up a door of utterance gives us the opportunity no matter where we go to teach the gospel okay um second corinthians 2 and 12. second corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. furthermore when i came to troas mm -hmm. to preach christ's gospel mm -hmm. and a door was opened unto me of the lord so now it shows that when the when the apostles traveled, that the Most High opened up avenues for them. Okay, whether He gathered His people into into that chief place of concourse. Remember this: the Lord told us to go and preach in the chief place of concourse. But what has to be there? Our people has to be there. So the Lord gathers His people where this word is going out, that they can hear it. Okay, so always send up prayers for that every time we travel, every time we go to camp, every week. Whether we, go, uh, I know some some cities go to camp multiple times per week flyer missions people that you hand flyers to pray that the most high opens a door of utterance all right so um today um class is going to be kind of short today because uh, i have uh, other arrangements that i have to take care of some things i got to take care of but you know nonetheless i pray brothers and sisters are edified and i pray that um you know, the class is well needed for somebody, you know, for us to better ourselves as we walk in this, in this truth, um, in this faith. Um, there's, there's some, there's some, there's some things we need. And, you know, a lot of times when I teach, I'll go over a lot of things that pertain to our salvation. Okay. Which is, which is vital, which is vital. We always, we always could get the deep breakdowns and I'll, I'll leave that up to, uh, the bishops and deacons and, you know, we get that meat, but, um, you know, try, where we try to deal with um, those things that pertain to our salvation. And I saw I saw something yesterday that kind of, or well, last night that kind of sat on my spirits. I said, you know, let's let's go over this. So today's class is called "Patience is Necessary." Okay, patience is necessary. Um, if there's a brother online that can scribe for me, I'd appreciate it. Um, and we'll get started. So actually, you have your phone. Yes, sir. Give me the go to Google and define patience for me. I want the definition of patience. All right. That's something that we as a nation have to work on. OK, <clears throat> as, as a nation. And I'm going to I'm going to try. I know some a couple times someone has asked about class or daily bread being on Periscope. And I'm going to try my best to start doing it that way. Where it's two platforms. Um, I, I, I think I got too comfy with one, hmm. you know, but I, I haven't done the back and forth with the head in, in a minute. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to do uh, two platforms. OK, but um, and keep reminding me because I forget my, I'll go back to a monotone every now and then. Just remind me to speak up. Forgive me. And if and if and if this tablet is not working out, um, just log into Facebook Live. But I'll, I'll just remind me to, I'll forget, because I'll start talking and my tone will drop a little, my voice will drop, so my t uh, level will drop. So just just bear with us, all right? You don't need a microphone. Where's the microphone? Well, 
You want to shout out something? A little bit. I'll read that news. How long would it take you to get it going? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Patience. So we're looking at the definition of patience, right? Go ahead. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay. So now it says, wait, wait read it again. The capacity, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay. Now, this it takes almost it, it takes a form of training, it takes a form of discipline in order to accept or tolerate delay. Go ahead. Trouble. Uh huh. Or suffering. Or what? Suffering. Or suffering. It takes a sense of discipline to accept suffering delay trouble so on and so forth right go ahead without getting angry without what getting angry uh -huh. or upset so now read it from the top again what do you what definition are you reading patience uh-huh the capacity to accept or tolerate delay mm -hmm. trouble or suffering mm -hmm. without getting angry without getting angry or upset or upset so now, today's class is called Patience is Necessary. Patience is Necessary. Because we use that word all the time, be patient, be patient, be patient. But yet, but yet, we really don't even know what it even means. As, as, as common as the word patience is, and as often as we use it, we really don't even know what it means. Because when I read it, I was a little like, wait a minute. It's a little deeper than I was thinking. I'm thinking it's just sit back and wait. Read it again. Patience. Uh -huh. The capacity to accept or tolerate mm -hmm. delay, mm -hmm. trouble, mm -hmm. or suffering. Or suffering. I, you got to read it. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it, it, it just takes me back a little bit. Like, wow. Okay. So read that again. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, mm -hmm. trouble, uh -huh. or suffering. To accept trouble, to accept delay, to accept suffering. Go ahead. Without getting angry. Without getting angry. Or upset. Or or throwing a daggone little tantrum, like a little girl. Wait a minute. But one of the things is delay. Real quick, let's go to Sirach 20 and 32. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20 and verse 32. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20, verse 32. Come on. Necessary patience uh -huh. in seeking the Lord. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. So in order to seek the Lord, one of the things you have to learn is patience. Why is that? Because the Lord doesn't operate on our time. We operate on his. So the scriptures tell us that it's necessary to have patience when seeking the Lord. Because he doesn't have to answer you immediately. The same thing when when it comes to punishment or judgment. Matter of fact, hold that. Let me get Numbers 14 and I think it's 18. Yes, verse 18. Numbers chapter 14. Be louder, because remember this side. Oh, I'm sorry. Right here. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. Uh -huh. The Lord is long suffering. He's what? Long suffering, okay, and of great mercy. So the Lord—that's something that we we tend to forget. We serve a merciful God. We serve a merciful God. Go ahead, and of great mercy, uh -huh. forgiving iniquity and transgression. So the Lord is so merciful that He will forgive uh, iniquity, transgression, so on and so forth. Go ahead, and by no means. Clearing the guilt. So now, on the on the on the in the same token, on the same hand, even though he's merciful, forgives iniquity, forgives sin, it says, but by no means clearing the guilty. Right. So the guilty are those who don't repent, and the guilty are those who have offended against the children of Israel. It says, by no means 
is he going to clear the guilty? Meaning the coons of our people, those who, uh, those who actually uh, don't believe this truth and turn and turn with uh, join with affinity with the enemy in order to come against this truth. It says by no means clearing the guilty. Go ahead. Visiting the iniquity uh -huh. of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So now, even when it comes to judgment, even when it comes to judgment, the Most High doesn't have to bring forth judgment immediately. It says he's long-suffering because what? We operate on his time. He doesn't operate on ours. So now go back to Sirach chapter 20. Ecclesiasticus chapter 20, verse 32. Come on. Necessary patience. So now, necessary patience. It's a necessity. Go read the definition. You have a definition there? We're gonna, we're gonna listen, we're gonna read this definition a few times so that Pat it sticks. Go ahead. Patience. Uh -huh. The capacity to accept or tolerate uh -huh. delay, delay, trouble, uh -huh. or suffering. Or suffering. Without getting angry. Without getting angry. Or upset. Or upset. Man. Now, we'll go back to Sirach 20. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20, verse 32. Come on. Necessary patience in seeking the Lord. So now, in seeking the Lord, it's necessary for you to, to, to accept delay, suffering, troubles, so on and so forth. What are, what are we actually reading? We're reading... Ecclesiastic is the second chapter. We're going to touch that in a second, right? Matter of fact, let's go there now. Ecclesiastic is chapter uh, 2, start at verse 1. Ecclesiastic is chapter 2, verse 1. Uh -huh. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, uh -huh. prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare your soul for temptation. Go ahead. Set thy heart aright. Get your mind right. And constantly endure. Because this is a race of endurance. It's not about who's the fastest, who can get to the finish line first, second, third. It's about endurance. Go ahead. And make not haste in time of trouble. Make not haste means to be patient. Make not haste in time of trouble because you su you're supposed to have patience. One of those top, one of those words and definition that says, uh, in time of trouble. Read the definition again. Patience. Uh-huh. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, delay, trouble, trouble, or suffering. Read that, Sirach, again. Ecclesiastic is chapter 2, verse 2. Uh-huh. Set thy heart aright. Set your heart aright. Get your mind right. And constantly endure. Come on. And make not haste in time of of trouble why is that because the lord says it's necessary for you to be patient when you're seeking him in your time of trouble you draw nigh unto the lord and the lord will draw nigh unto you not time to be hasty not time to be impatient i hope y'all understand that read verse three cleave unto him mm -hmm. And depart not away. Because in our time of trouble, our patience is clinging unto the Lord. That's when you go deep into the scripts. That's when you seek counsel. That's when you uh, build yourself around righteous brothers and sisters. Not going to your wicked family house trying to get counsel from Big Mama while she eating fat back and hog maws. Are you kidding me? This is, this is a necessity in seeking the Lord. It is necessary for you to have that patience when you want to serve the Lord. When you come to serve the Lord, patience is a necessity. It's, it is a necessity. Read. That thou mayest be increased at thy last that, end. That you may gain at your latter end. And we're going to go more into that. Real quick, Jump. To, go to uh, Isaiah 30 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 7. Come on. For the Egyptians shall help in vain mm -hmm. and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. So now, what we what we what we do is we try to we try to join affinity with 
the Egyptians make a league of some sort. It talks about that in Ezekiel chapter 30. It went over this the other day. They tried to make a league. But guess what? The Lord says, listen, when you make a league or you desire to go back to the ways of Egypt, it's not profitable to you because the Egyptians are beneath you. So what we tend to do is we tend to operate ahead of the Lord instead of waiting patiently. But let's see what God says. Their strength is to sit still. Whoa. That, does that mean wait? Sit still meaning you, you, this is your time to humble down, be quiet, and to learn. Learn what? Learn how to deal with your situation. Learn how to be an example through the experience that you can now strengthen someone else. This is your time to sit still, not to make haste in your time of trouble. That's not what you're supposed to do. The scriptures, listen, and, the, and I always, we always say, all the, all the teachers always say this, the Bible is repetitive. It'll say the same thing over and over again because Israel got a thick skull. That skull thick as I don't know what. So, we, so the Lord has to drive it home because we don't get it. We don't get it. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 7. Come on. For the Egyptians shall help in vain uh -huh. and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Mm -hmm. Their strength is to sit still. So now our strength, our strength, the children of Israel's strength is to sit still. Now, does that mean you need a job and you just sit at home? and not be a man or woman of action? Well, Captain said, I should just sit still. That's my strength. That's my strength. Somebody's going to call me. I think it's going to froze. I think Periscope froze, y'all. Somebody type on Periscope to log into IUIC Facebook Live. I mean, uh, IUIC Classroom. I don't know if it froze or not, but it looks frozen. You need a job and you just sit at home. Not oh, it's still going? Oh, okay. It froze. It froze? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll be, they'll be all right. <laughs> hey, type in there log into uh, IUIC Classroom on Facebook. So now, let's go right here. All right, hold on a second. Let this, let the, let the uh, officer write that. Cause I lost my train of thought. I need time to gather it back, <laughs> so I'm playing it off. <laughs> you, don't uh, well, you know what? All right. So, so it says looping. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. Let me get Periscope back up. Bear with me, y'all. There I go. See, I, I always tell y'all, man, that's, I'm not the tech-savvy dude, so when something go wrong, mm, Lord's will we have the right number. Lord's will. Periscope. Bear with me, y'all. Hey, I think, uh, yeah, Periscope is going to have to. I ain't got time to look for that. Dag on. Uh, High tech tap. You know it's so crazy. Like my my daughter, she be flawless. And I'm sitting here like, how do you turn it on? <laughs> it's sad. It's sad. Lord's will I, I step up uh um Lord's will I step my game up, my tech game up. But yeah, thank you, Sister Eliora. Um sitting still that doesn't mean you you uh, brothers or sisters not be of action. That's not what that means. Jump to verse uh, 15. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. Mm -hmm. 
For thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. He says, in returning what? To the Lord and in rest shall you be saved. Resting where? Resting in the Lord. Go ahead. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Mm -hmm. And ye would not. It says, wait a minute. I'm telling you, listen. Just trust in me. The Lord says, just trust in me. Put your, put your, put your, your faith, put your belief, put your understanding, put your, 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 um, uh, put aside your fears and trust in the Lord. But what do we say? Read that last line again. And ye would not. But we wouldn't. We wouldn't do it. That's the sad part. The Lord gave us the means of how to overcome, how to get it done. And we said, mm, nah, we like, it our, we like it our own way. Continue to read. Verse 16. Uh -huh. But ye said, no, for we will flee upon horses. It says, no, we're going to flee upon horses. We're going to do the opposite of what the Lord told us to do. The Lord says, be still and rest. We said, no, we're going to get on these horses and we're going to find our own escape. Hey, you got some kid. The Lord says he's going to, he's going to, um, he's going to gather the, 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 the remnant from the four corners of the earth. You got camps teaching. No, you got to leave. The Lord said in the midst of the fire, he's going to deliver us. But what do we say? No, we're going to provide our own deliverance. We're going to go and live on a little island somewhere in the tropics so that we can flee Babylon's destruction. Read that again. But ye said, no, for we will flee upon horses. Wait a minute. So why you, got, why you got people still teaching that today? People still teaching that today to go and flee upon horses. Go save yourselves. You can bring forth your own salvation. If y'all believe that, y'all crazy. Y'all are crazy. Talking about, I'm going to go and, and buy a hut in Cambodia because the bombs won't go off over here. You are retarded. It, it's, it's, it, and I like that. Aletheia, our way doesn't even work. That is, that's, that's a true statement. We have tried our way for six, almost 600 years. That has not worked. And actually, no, no, I'm sorry. We tried our way for thousands of years. We tried it when we were sons of God, laying with the daughters of men. We tried it when we were in uh, Egypt, or when we came out of Egypt in the wilderness. We tried our, we're going to go into that history too. We tried our own way, and it has never, ever worked out for us. Just think about any, any time in history. When we try our own way, has it ever worked out for us as a people? Nope. Nope. Jump to verse 18. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. And oh, no, finish verse 16. Verse 16. But ye said, no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. So the Lord says, listen, you're trying to escape upon horses to bring your own salvation. He says, listen, you think you're fast? The people I'm going to send after you is going to be fast. Jump to verse 18. Verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait mm. that he may be gracious unto you. Mm -hmm. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Uh -huh. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Well, let's let that marinate. Read it while, while it marinates. Read the definition of patience again. Patience, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Read that, the last line of that, uh, verse 18 again. Isaiah 30, verse 18. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Because we should have the ability to not make haste in time of trouble.
we should have the ability that when suffering comes, we don't make haste, but we wait patiently upon the Lord's deliverance. Because just like if, if it's sickness, it's not in our time we heal. Healing comes from the Lord. It tells you that in Sirach, 30, is it 38? Healing comes from, in the Wisdom of Solomon chapter uh, 12 as well, healing comes from the Lord. It's not of our own will. Listen, I don't care. I, I, and, and, you know, just like when you, you know, you got a cold or something, you go take medicine. Now you wonder why it takes the whole bottle of NyQuil to get you right. Or two bottles of NyQuil or whatever. Because it's not up to you. There's many people that take a bunch of medicines, pills, herbs, whatever, and they just can't get healthy because it's the will of the Lord. We, we got to stop thinking we have power over ourselves. Yes, we, we put things in action in order to get results. But at the end of the day, you are waiting upon the Lord, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. You thinking you're doing it on your own is not going to change the Lord taking his time to get things done, to set things ducks in a row. That You're not going to speed up the Lord. He has all of that worked out already. Your job is to do your part and rest and wait on the Lord. That's our job. Let's go to Luke chapter 7. In verse 13. Luke chapter 7, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion mm -hmm. on her mm -hmm. and said unto her, Weep not. Mm -hmm. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Mm -hmm. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Mm -hmm. And he delivered him to his mother. So now what we see is a son who, who passed and we see the, the, the mercy of our savior. He said, listen, he says, don't weep. Don't be sorry. W what is he saying? Put your trust in me. He said, put your trust and I'm going to take care of it. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Verse 16. And there came a fear on all and they glorified God mm. saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. Mm -hmm. And that God has visited his people. Come on. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea. So now what I want you to see is this rumor of what Christ did went throughout all Judea. The rumor of, in top of verse 16, it says, and there came a fear on all. The fear of him was rumored all throughout Judea. Go ahead. And throughout all the region round about. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. And the disciples of John showed him all of these things. Mm -hmm. So John's disciples went to him while he was in prison and told him everything that they had heard, saw, so on and so forth. They're, they're relaying all information to him. This is, the, this is intel right here. This is your Instagram. Mm -hmm. This is your uh, uh, Twitter. This is your uh, uh, Facebook Live. They are bringing him the information as soon as they heard it, right? Go ahead. And John, calling unto him, two of his disciples, mm -hmm. sent them to Jesus saying, Art thou he that should come, mm -hmm. or look we for another? Wait, but John walked with Christ. But now John is asking, after he's hearing about all these things that Christ is doing, and he hears about um, the fear, so on and so forth, now John is actually questioning if Christ is the one, the Messiah, or not. Not in a rebellious sense, but in a sense that He's in prison and his situation caused him to lose patience. He's in a situation where he's locked up. It's not as good as it was a week ago. Remember that JG saw it was all good just a week ago? It's not good like it was a week ago. And now you've lost patience because you hear about the Messiah blessing someone else and you're stuck in your situation. So you're in your situation you hear about someone else getting blessed in a certain way, and now it fast forwards you into the mode of where you have now lost patience. I hope, I hope y'all understand that. Let's read that again. Read verse, was it 19? Yes, read verse 19 again. Luke chapter 7, verse 19. Come on. And John calling unto him, 
two of his disciples, mm -hmm. sent them to Jesus, mm -hmm. saying, Art thou he that should come, mm -hmm. or look we for another? So why would John even question that when John walked with him and saw his miracles? What, 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 what are we showing you? According, like we just read in Sirach chapter 2, don't make haste in your time of trouble. Because what will happen is when you start to lose patience, you start to doubt the most high. You start to question the most high. You start to question, do I even belong here? Do I belong in this truth? Why did the Lord even choose me as wicked as I am? What I'm showing you is that the loss in being impatient can spawn a lot of what can be deemed as even blasphemies. I, I'm, I hope you understand that. So read verse 20 now. Luke chapter 7, verse 20. Mm -hmm. When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Read the, verse 21. Let's see if Christ even answered him. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, mm. how that the blind see, mm. the lame walk, mm. the lepers are cleansed, mm. the deaf hear, mm. the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. So now, what's very important is Christ kept doing the work, even though someone who was being impatient, one of his disciples was being impatient and demanded, you know, answers for certain things. Christ didn't stop doing the work. Christ was like, listen, would you see what I'm doing right here? Go tell John what you see. Inform John of everything you're seeing right now. And let, and let him decide. Because ultimately, your impatience or lack of belief doesn't change what the Most High said at all. Anybody talk to you? It's funny here. Getting, what kind of madness is this? So that doesn't change anything. Just like it says in Romans chapter 3. What if some did not believe? Does the, does the, does the unbelief, I don't want to jack it. Romans chapter 3. I'm sorry. You know me. I'll jack a scripture up in a minute. Ah. So. In, a, in our moment of weakness, in our moment of impatience, in our moment of disbelief, we'll start to question most high. Let read that real quick. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Uh -huh. God forbid. So what if you lose faith? What if you lose patience? Is that going to change anything of God? No. No. No, not at all. Real quick, let's go to Romans 10 and 2. Because there's something else that'll happen in that time of impatience, in that time of acting hastily, in that time of not trusting in the Lord because you want to, him to operate on your time. Okay, you're going through something. Lord, hear my prayers right now and deliver this, that, and the third. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes we have to go through certain things so that the Lord can prove us that we are actually faithful in this truth. I'm going to say that again. Read the definition of patience again, please. Patience, the capacity to accept or tolerate mm -hmm. delay, trouble, or suffering mm -hmm. without getting angry or upset. Without getting angry or upset. Real quick, you know what? Before you go there, you read Romans 3. But remember when John... When he told, when Christ told John's disciples, go tell John what you see. Mm -hmm. Go to, um, was it Luke 14 and 11? John 14 and 11. Because for a moment, John lost faith. He, he lost, he was questioning, he was wavering because he's like, listen, I'm hearing about all the blessings you're doing out there, and I'm stuck in prison. I'm in prison. What, what about me? What about me? Because that's, that's, how, that's how 
listen, man, that's how a lot of times impatience work. You see certain things, you, you, you hear certain things, and you're like, what about me? Did the Lord forsake me? What have I done? Read that. John chapter 14, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Believe me that I am in the Father, mm -hmm. and the Father in me, mm -hmm. or else believe me for the very works sake. So now, that's, this is what Christ was uh, reaffirming with, with John's disciples. He said, believe for the very works sake. That's why he said, look, he said, the blind, the blind see, the, 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 leapers are, the lepers are healed, so on and so forth. He said, believe for the very works sake. And this is, and I want to highlight that because we're going to go into that in a, in a second. Just, just bear with me, bear with me. So Romans 10 and, 10 and 2. Here's something that happens when we lose impatience. When we lose patience and become impatient. Go ahead. Romans chapter 10, verse 2. Come on. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. So we bear record that we as a people, we're the, we're the most zealous people people to serve the lord and zealous in the sense that sometimes we actually want to we want to serve the one true god we just were taught incorrectly but go ahead but not according to knowledge but it's not according to what the bible says it's not according to the laws of god or anything written in the ordinances of the lord go ahead for they being ignorant of god's righteousness so now a lot of us are ignorant about the lord telling us to have a discipline of patience we're ignorant about that. We are ignorant about that fact. Go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Now, that's the key. Because you have brothers and... Actually, you have a sister. You have a sister who left IUIC because she was upset about her not being able to find a husband. So now what she did was she goes back into the world, made an affinity with the other, with, with, um, with, the, with the enemies. And now she's establishing her own righteousness. This is what brothers have done. Certain things don't, op don't happen in the manner in which they wanted to, in the time they wanted to. And you begin to establish your own righteousness. Now you go back to worshiping Caesar Borgia. You worshiping a, a, a little fat white baby. Uh, 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 shooting a bow and arrow. You, this, this, this is what you do. You lose patience, and now you're establishing your own righteousness. Not a, now what the Bible says doesn't matter anymore. You establish your own righteousness. Read it again. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness mm -hmm. and going about to establish their own righteousness. So being ignorant of God's righteousness, there's some things you might not know in here or have turned your ear away from knowing it. Meaning you don't want to know. So in that, you establish your own righteousness. You start saying the way I am doing this is right. God loves everybody is right. Jesus came for everybody in the world is right. Come as you are is right. You start establishing your own righteousness. Go ahead. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. But yet you have not submitted yourselves until the writings of the Lord. The Lord says necessary patience in seeking the Lord. It's necessary. It's a necessity to have that patience when you're seeking the Lord. So why? So that you won't make haste in time of trouble. So that you won't uh, blaspheme the Lord. You won't forsake the Lord. You'll actually wait on him. You'll actually be still, meaning, you know what? This is the time, okay, I'm dealing with this. You know what? Let me start studying on this topic. Let me see how to build myself up so when I come out of it, because you got to have that confidence that you're going to come out of it, okay? When I come out of it, I am going to, um, hold on, First Peter 5 and 9. First Peter 5 and 9. First Peter chapter 5, verse 9. Come on. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, mm -hmm. knowing that the same afflictions mm -hmm. are accomplished in your brethren. So now, it says, stand fast what? In the faith. This is very important. We just read in Isaiah 30 about being still, about blessed are they that wait upon the Lord. Now, Peter's saying, stand fast in your faith, meaning hold on. 
don't rush. In this faith, you have to be still. You have to wait upon the Lord. Because what? You can actually be hasty and make a horrible decision or make things worse than they already are. You can actually make things worse. Hope you understand that. Let's go back. You read verse 3 in Romans 10? Yes, sir. Establish our righteousness. Give me Exodus 24. Yes. Exodus 24 and 12. Exodus 24 and verse 12. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone mm -hmm. and a law and commandments which I have written mm -hmm. that thou mayest teach them. Mm -hmm. And Moses... So now, remember, the Lord is calling Moses up to Mount Sinai. He says, listen, come up here with me. Because I'm going to give you some laws, statutes, and commandments to give to the children of Israel. Go ahead. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us. Wait. What did he say? Tarry ye here. Tarry means to wait. To wait. Moses told the elders, and the elders would teach, tell the people, wait right here. Wait. He didn't say wait 20 minutes. He didn't say wait an hour. He said, wait. Be still. Be patient. Wait right here. Go ahead. Until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, mm -hmm. let him come unto them. Mm -hmm. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory... John had been wise, seeking confirmation. Now, when I, when I said John had, and, and also too, remember this. It's, that's in Luke when, um, when, John to, when Christ told Peter that Satan desired to have thee, right? Same thing with Peter. What happened was Peter denied Christ through fear. You see that thing? So it's showing you that not only John, but Peter too. And Peter is an elder. So Sister Joel, though he was seeking confirmation, there was a reason why he was now seeking that confirmation. The reason he was seeking the confirmation is because of his suffering. He was in prison. The same way where Peter in the book of Luke, where the, the multitude wanted to beat Peter's behind because they thought he was one of Christ's apostles, he denied Christ thrice. The same thing. The same thing. Your situation can have you act hastily. Your situation can cause you to act hastily. I want y'all to understand that. So, so only reason John was seeking confirmation, John didn't see confirmation while he was walking with Christ, while he sought the miracles. He didn't see confirmation then. But now, because of his situation where others, oh, she's an Edomite? Oh, damn, my bad. All right, my bad. Thank you, Zeph. Thank you. My bad. I can, I can, I'm sorry. I couldn't tell. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, forget it. Cancel that. I'll read that. Exodus chapter 24 <laughs> and verse 16. Oh, that was funny. Good. And the glory of the Lord abode unto Mount Sinai, uh -huh. and the cloud covered it six days. In the seventh day, what, what, what you reading again? Twenty four and I'm at verse sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, go ahead. In the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud, mm -hmm. and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire mm -hmm. on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So now, the children of Israel can see the top of the mount. Moses said, "Wait down here. Don't come up. Be patient." They can see the devouring fire at the top of the mountain. Right, go ahead. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud mm -hmm. and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And read verse uh, 25 and 1. Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Where is this? This is in the mount. Moses went up the mountain 
and he's now in the in the in the in the presence of the Lord, right? Jump over a few chapters. We're gonna go to 32 and 1. Actually, go up a little bit. Go to 31 and 16. Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. Wherefore, so this same time frame, but time has passed now. Time has lapsed. We're in, you know, remember Moses is going to be at 40 days and 40 nights. So time has lapsed. Days have passed, right? Go ahead. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. For a perpetual covenant. So now, what I want you to see is the Most High has given, he gave Moses the laws to speak unto the children of Israel. He's given him the commandments, right? And it's not, it's more than 10. I'm going to say that. More than 10. He's given him all type of laws. Because always remember, it could not have been 10 commandments. Because when you go into the, the sacrificial offerings, you have to offer a turtle dove. So these are all, these are all commandments. These are all laws. If you do this, this is the sin offering. This is the um, the the peace offerings, so on and so forth. All of these are laws, totaling totaling up to roughly about six hundred and thirteen laws. Okay, how to do this, how to do washings, how to so on and so. All of those laws were given to Moses. It was not just ten. Okay, stop letting these uh, uh, people in Christianity deceive you. He didn't just get ten commandments because. How, how do they know to uh, all of the sin offerings and so on and so forth? Go ahead. Verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. It should be a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Go ahead. Somebody said abort mission when I said to eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. So in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. Go ahead. And on the seventh day, he rested. He rested. So. To show you, um, so he's so he's showing you these are the commandments that the Lord is telling him. Go ahead. And was refreshed, and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. When he made an end of communing, so all these chapters from chapter twenty-four over to the end of thirty-one, this is when the Lord made an end of communing with the children of, with uh, with Moses. Go ahead. End of communing with him upon Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Two tables of testimony, mm -hmm. tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Written with the finger of God. Continue to read. And when the people saw that Moses delayed. Hold on. When the people saw that Moses delayed. Moses wasn't gone for six years. You know how they have those, those casualties of war. You go over and you appeal. Was it POW? Mm -hmm. Prison, prisoner of war. And you go on for like 15 years, you come back looking like a totally different person when they finally find you. Moses wasn't going that long. He was going for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses was not gone that long. But remember, when Moses was leaving, he said, listen, wait right here. Be patient. They saw the devouring fire from the Lord. They saw it. <laughs> you still see the fire going on. Nah, he did, he did, he did. But the Lord called him up. Go ahead. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, mm -hmm. the people gathered themselves together. Mm -hmm. They established their own righteousness. We just read that in Romans chapter 10. So being ignorant of God's righteousness, God is giving Moses the laws to give to them. All their only listen, their only job, Moses that, that Moses gave them, wait right here. Just wait. You only got one job. Just one. And it's wait. Now, mind you, this is after they saw the pillar of fire by day, the cloud by uh, excuse me, pillar of fire by night, the cloud of by day. They saw the, the, the Red Sea open up. It turned into green pasture. There was no obstacles in their way. The Lord moved boulders out of their way, moved stumps out of their way, moved everything out of their way and made a green pasture for them to pass through. Once the last person touched down on that other side and the Egyptians were in that seabed, he closed the ocean on them. This is 
after they saw this. Continue to read. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, oh, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. He says, we don't know what become of him. But guess what? Aaron was being weak. This is why you brothers, if you're on your officers, so on and so forth, you have... If you notice, we deal with leaders, you leaders of the body differently than we deal with a member in the sense that you're getting personal grooming in order to be strengthened that if somebody comes with another doctrine, wavering spirits, evil, so on and so forth, you're strengthened enough to deal with it. Aaron gave in to the people. Moses was chosen as a leader. Aaron was chosen as a priest. And what did the people do? People didn't see their leader anymore, so they turned to the second in charge and said, hey, make us some gods. What, like the gods we had in Egypt? That's what we want. We want to be like those daggone Egyptians. Didn't anybody just do that class the other day? We are nothing but sodomites and Egyptians. We want to do everything that our captives have taught us to do. That's the same way where we'll be in this truth, we'll establish our own righteousness and go back and serve Caesar Borgia. Because we want to go back to being Egyptians. We want to go back to being sodomites. Read. Verse 2. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings. Why Aaron didn't tell him, go sit your behind down and wait on my brother? You simple Negroes. Aaron should have blasted the hell out of him. But what did he do? Okay. Mealy mouth Negroes, man. Read. Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives. He'd even, he'd even ponder on that thing. Like, this, this ain't right. Like, I saw, I saw the miracles too. Like, we tripping right now. Like, nah, y'all tripping. You Y'all gonna have to beat my behind. Y'all tripping. I know what I saw. I know what I saw. But you gotta remember, those spirits are back in the earth today. That's why when you read Jude, there are many crept in unawares. What spirit do you think that's in? What, what spirit do you think that's in? This is the spirit right here we're reading about. They creep in unawares. They come to spy out your liberty. They come to sow discord. They come to disrupt the operation of God. Those spirits are here today trying to disrupt the operation of God. That's why, we, this is, that's why we don't go crazy over when someone leaves, they make a video, I left IUIC because of this, they ran out of toilet tissue. Mm -hmm. What? Use your hand. That was nasty, man. I don't care. Do something. Use your sock. <laughs> Use your daggone sock, man. Okay? Ain't gonna be no shaman in the wilderness, damn it. Go ahead, read that thing, man. <laughs> and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings oh, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, uh -huh. and bring them unto me. Mm -hmm. And all the people break off the golden earrings. They were happy, like, Yeah, he's gonna do it. He fell for it. Go ahead. Which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Mm -hmm. And he received them. And he took them at their hand. And fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now, it, it gives me a headache just to think. And I, and I never forget, especially when I first came. Actually, no. One of the questions that helped me really accept this truth is, was this right here? Or the, this part of history. And I'm like, how is it that the children of Israel saw all of those miracles and they never adhered to the word of God? I could never wrap my head around it until I was built up to be a teacher. My Lord. My Lord. I'm looking at them. I'm, when I, we go out to, to camp, we're looking at the wilderness. 
That's what that is. That is the wilderness when our people were rebellious. They wanted to exhort themselves, uh, exert themselves over Moses, where they wanted to have other gods. We are, that's the wilderness. Modern times being a chief place of concourse, but it's the same spirits that were in the wilderness. Same thing. Jump to verse 19. Exodus chapter 32, verse 19. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, mm -hmm. that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot. Go ahead. And he cast... Isn't that just like us at camp? Get hot. You get hot. You be like, yo, y'all are wicked. That's when you start shaking the hands, so you start blasting. Go ahead. And he cast the tables out of his hands. So now, remember, the Lord, remember, 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 the Lord gave him two tables of stone with the, with the, the commandments on it, with some commandments on it, right? Go ahead. And he threw them. He, threw, he, he got so mad, he threw the stones. He's like, you wicked Negroes, man. <laughs> Go ahead. And break them beneath the mount. Uh -huh. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire uh -huh. and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water. And strawed it upon the water. And made the children of Israel drink of it. See that? So not he, so they, he, he burned the, the calf, molted it down. They ground it into powder and he made the children of Israel drink it. Damn. And guess, and, and he died. Guess what? This was judgment of the Lord. This is the judgment of the Lord. Because what? You want to establish your own righteousness. That's what you want to do. You want to establish your own righteousness. Learn how to talk to people. No doubt. No doubt. See, and then you always got to wonder. Better ways how to there's better ways how to talk to you first. What are you talking about? This this class will take a turn. <sighs> Learn how to talk to people. Hey, hey, did 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 um uh, when we were called porch monkeys, coons, jigaboos, negras, um beaten in the head for what when they were trying to vote trying to rally, march. You had to step off the curb when white folks were walking by. They had laughing barrels on every corner, so you couldn't even laugh in public. You had to stick your head into a friggin' barrel. Why nobody is, why nobody talking about that? Why, why isn't anybody talking about that? You worried about how I'm talking right now? Meanwhile, you clicked into this class? So, so, so who needs to learn something? You need to learn how to not be simple your entire life. Don't be simple your entire life. You clicked into a class and now you're trying to dictate something. Damn. All people, man. Oh, maybe not all people. Hey, look, and I especially don't respect y'all that can't even have your profile picture up. You got a picture of something else. Why? Because you're one of them scared trollers who don't want to be exposed for what you really are. So therefore, you don't, you scared to, and a lot of you, listen, a lot of y'all too, a lot of y'all Israelites, y'all scared to show yourselves. And I understand sometimes you have maybe jobs or whatever that you can't show your picture or whatever the case may be. I understand. But some of y'all, if it's not for that reason, some of y'all just scary as hell. But I'm not going to detour. Um, let's go to Ecclesiasticus 11 and 25. Ecclesiastes. Right, right. Moses, Moses should learn how to treat how, how to treat him. He made him drink the golden calf. Right, right. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 25. In the day of prosperity, mm -hmm. there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. So now, yeah, laughing. That's, that's, where, they, that's where they get the term, Sister Shiloh, a barrel of laughs because they had laughing barrels. That's true. So a lot of times, we as a people, in our time of prosperity, we forget about the times when we were struggling. And when we're struggling, 
we forget about the times that the Lord has already blessed us. In order, in order for you to get to this point of where you're struggling, you, you pass through a little prosperity where you actually had the rent money, where you were able to uh, finish college, where you were able to, um, where you were healed from sickness. So now you're sick again, and you totally forgot that the Lord had blessed you last winter when you had the flu. Now you got it this winter, you questioning the most high. But wait a minute, he's blessed you with healing every winter before that. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. So in the day of prosperity, you forgot. That's why, that's why a lot of the wealthy forget where they came from because they're able to buy their way out of their situation. I hope y'all understand that. Go ahead. And in the day of affliction. So now, what were the children of, afflic of, of Israel afflicted with? They were without their leader. So they were a time where they had to think for themselves, do for them. Like, man, what do we do now? But Moses has been telling us what to do every step of the way. Now, we got to think for ourselves. So in the time of your affliction, go ahead. There is no more remembrance of prosperity. All of a sudden, you forgot that the Lord delivered you out of slavery. Now that you're in the wilderness, your leader is not in your presence right now. All of a sudden, you forget that the Lord delivered you out of slavery. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Go ahead. Verse 26. For it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. So the Lord said he'll reward a man according to his ways. Lamentations 3.17. Carlos said, I just got told to put my fringes away and follow dress code, but too late. I don't care anymore. I put my two weeks notice to have the Sabbath day holy. I have a plan. All praises. All praises, bro. All praises. Yeah, read that. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 17. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. Mm -hmm. I forget prosperity. So now, when we are not in a time of peace, we also forget the prosperity of the Lord. So what we're showing you is these are things that come about that cause us to lose patience, or we feel that we're losing patience because of these things. So now you have when there's, when there's no peace, meaning you can't get peace, whether it be in your house, on the job, at school, you feel like you don't have a moment's peace, right? Also, when you're circumstance, let's say you're in prison or you, know, you, you, you don't have your own place, so on and so forth you start to forget that the Lord had already blessed you. And, it's, and what I'm showing you is that spirit is the same spirit they had in the wilderness. That's why they, they turn to their own righteousness. They establish their own gods. They establish that God loves everybody. They establish that, uh, that God is white or color doesn't matter. It's, or no, the, the statement that uh, one of them made was, it's not only about the color. The hell? Didn't we just read, John 14, 11 says, for the very work's sake, we believe in him. We, we just hate ourselves. We hate ourselves. Therefore, we establish our own rights. No matter how much you hear this truth, no matter how many classes you have, we, have, we still have those spirits inside of us where, you know what, we don't want to wait on the Lord. If some, let's say, let me give you another example. Somebody offends you in, in the congregation, right? Very few times do we hear that a brother or sister wink at ignorance the same way the lord winked at ignorance ignorance often it's a uh, oh i need to speak to the bishop about this i need to speak to both bishops about this and all the deacons we got to have a council about this sister who didn't like my unleavened bread maybe you just need to make better unleavened bread how about that? But even if that is the case, how about we wink at ignorance? Because we don't, sometimes we don't know the process it went through. You might have lost your, lost your purse, your wallet. It was a rough day. You had a lot on your mind. Or same thing with brothers. You might have had a lot on your mind that day, just lost your job today, and you hadn't said anything. So guess what? You offend me in that. You know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. It's no big deal. 
but we don't want to move past that. I'm, I hope y'all understand that, man. Read that again. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 17. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. So now it says, the Lord has removed, uh, 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 this, is the book, this is Jeremiah, right? He said, the Lord has removed his soul far from peace. Why? The Babylonians were taking us over. We don't have peace anymore. We don't have our own anymore. Go ahead. I forget prosperity. So now Jeremiah says, when I'm in this affliction, I actually forgot the prosperity of the Lord, that we were ruling, that the other nations did pay us tribute, that they did bow down to us. We forget that. We forget that. The Lord, uh, we, we're sick. We're sick now. We got the flu right now. Totally forgot that every other year you had the flu, the Lord delivered you. Totally forgot that. Hope you understand? Ezekiel 16. No, I'm sorry. Exodus 16. Hey, that's because the Most High hasn't put his foot in your behind yet. That's why you're at peace with your life. Most High has not put his foot in your behind yet. But he will. I guarantee you. And if he does, I'm sure you won't say it. Go ahead. Um, 16 and 1. Exodus chapter 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin. Uh, Sister Tiffany, we were not in Jeremiah. We were, we were actually in Lamentations. Lamentations 3 and 17. Lamentations was written by Jeremiah as well. I'm sorry, go ahead, read that again. And they, Exodus chapter 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin, mm -hmm. which is between Elam and Sinai. Come on. On the 15th day of the second month, after their departing out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. So now, what will happen is when this situation changes, you don't have the peace, you don't have the, the, the comfortable condition that you were once in, or the, or, the, or the comfortable health that you were once in, all of a sudden you start to murmur against the Lord. What I'm showing you is this is the same spirit that was in the wilderness. And today we forget that the Lord told us to have patience. We forget that the Lord said it's necessary for you to, in seeking him, you're going to have to have patience. We forget that. It goes out the window all of a sudden. Go ahead. Murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord? So now they start talking mess now. He was like, man, look, Moses, your God want us to die out here. But this is after he delivered them. This is after they saw all the plagues in Egypt. This is after they were delivered out of Egypt through the Red Sea. Most High killed the armies. This is after that. What are they saying now? Would to God we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots mm -hmm. and when we did eat bread to the full? Mm -hmm. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So he says, says Moses, you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill us with hunger. Now, again, we're talking about the same God that brought forth locusts that made darkness, it was so dark, you couldn't see the, the fire in front of your face in Egypt, but there was light in Goshen. You, so, so wait, so let's say that barrier of darkness began right here. You're in Goshen, looking out of Goshen, and you see nothing but darkness. But you know over in that direction was the, was the land of Egypt. And there ain't not one flicker of light in that whole land. Co meaning, now I want you to think about this. In order for it to be completely dark, the moon couldn't shine over Egypt. Because if it was dark, the moon gives light. So what did the Lord do? The Lord stopped the light from the moon as well? Damn! You witness all of this. And now what are they saying? Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord 
in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, mm -hmm. for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly mm -hmm. with hunger. Mm -hmm. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, mm -hmm. and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 4 again, please. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. So he says, listen, the Lord says, I'm still going to teach you discipline. You're going to gather a certain rate every day, meaning it's going to be according to the size of your family. You're not going to really have to overdo it because it's going to rain every day from heaven. But I, I want you to be disciplined because some things are going to come upon you that you're going to need to learn discipline. You had no discipline in Egypt. So now, now what I want you to learn is this place is gather a certain rate every day. Go ahead. That I may prove them. That he may what? Prove them. He's going to see if you are approved to go to the next stage. So guess what? You were in the wilderness. He says, I'm going to let a little hunger be here. And then I'm going to see what they're going to do. Are they going to speak against me or are they going to pray to the Lord and ask for something to eat? So you had the option of asking the Lord, asking Moses, because Moses was an intercessor, can you ask the Lord to give us something to eat? No. What the, and that's how I know this is Jake. Jake will complain before anything. I'm, look, I'm telling you, this is Jake right here. So Jake has the, I'm going to give you an example. I remember a co-worker, Jake, was complaining about how things are run at the job, right? So the boss says, okay, listen, we're looking for a, a, a supervisor to train. You can help run the stuff a better, if you see, if you see a better way. I don't want to be no supervisor. But wait a minute. You've been complaining about how things are run. I'm giving you the opportunity now to help fix things. No, nope, not me. That ain't my job. That is the Negro that we're reading about in the Bible right now. So you have the means, because remember, the way that the Lord sent Moses because he heard the groanings, he heard our affliction. So now we have the means of at, going to Moses who speaks directly with the Lord and saying, Moses, we haven't eaten in three days, four days, five days. We're really hungry. Is there any way the Most High can bless us? The Negro starts complaining. It's like, Psh, that God of yours. So now it's showing that they're ignorant of God's righteousness. That's why they move forward to establish their own righteousness. I hope y'all understand that. Second Ezra chapter one, verse 13. I tell you, look, look, yeah, exactly. That's us. That is us all the way. Second Ezra 1 and verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 13. We're going to be all the way to 26. I led you through it. I led you through the sea. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. Mm. I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. Mm -hmm. I gave you light and a pillar of fire. Mm. And great wonders have I done among you. So listen, there are some things that the Lord did as wondrous, that was wondrous for us that he that is not written. He didn't write everything down when it comes to that. Because he said, he said, and great wonders have I done among you. Go ahead. Yet have you forgotten? You see that? The Lord says, listen, even though I did all of this stuff, you forgot me. That's that's crazy. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Almighty God. Uh-huh. The quails were as a token for you. So it says the quails was, was a blessing for you. You wanted flesh. It was a blessing. Go ahead. I gave the tents for your safeguard. He says, listen, I even, I even provided you with tents to dwell in. You didn't have to sleep out of the bare elements. The Lord provided everything for us. And what does the Negro do? Still complain. Go ahead. Nevertheless, uh -huh. he murmured there. And triumph not in my name. And triumph not in the Lord's name. Go ahead. For the destruction of your enemies. Because, wait a minute. Because when the, when the, when the world was known, when the world would, knew that the Lord destroyed the, law, the greatest kingdom for the children of Israel, 
the Lord God of Israel was going to be exalted above all those gods. Nobody we warned about um, Isis, Horus, Ra, Hotep, Crap, Crapolia, whatever you want to call it, Astaroth. No other nation was going to worry about those gods anymore because what he did to the Egyptians proved he's the one true God in the earth. All we had to do was listen to him. That's it. Go ahead. But ever to this day, do ye yet murmur? Ever what? To this day. Now, this is Ezra writing this during the Persian captivity, right? Because the Lord dealt with Ezra on a, on a whole new level, right? And Ezra said, even to this day, so as we're reading it, even to this day, we're still in these errors. Go ahead. Do ye yet murmur? So we still complaining today. Go ahead. Where are the benefits that I have? I, I never been through nothing like this till I came into the truth. Lord, why you bring me in this truth? That's what you're really saying. I never been through this, this much stuff till I came in the truth. What you're saying on the low is I would rather be back in Christianity. That's what you're saying. It's, it's like cold word. Go ahead. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Mm -hmm. When you were hungry mm -hmm. and thirsty in the wilderness, mm -hmm. did ye not cry unto me, mm -hmm. saying, Why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? Mm -hmm. It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians. Dang. Than to it, die. It would have been better for us to still be in slavery serving the Egyptians. Damn. Go ahead. Then to die in this wilderness. Come on. Then had I pity upon your mourning mm -hmm. and gave you manna to eat. Mm -hmm. So ye did eat angels' bread. So this is when the Lord winked at ignorance. He says, you know what? All right, they just came out of Egypt, worshiping all the other gods, wearing loincloths, being all kind of manners of wickedness. I'm going to wink at this. So I'm going to give them manna. Go ahead. When ye were thirsty, did I not cleave the rock and waters flowed out to your fill mm -hmm. for the heat? I covered you with the leaves of the tree. I divided among you a fruitful land. Mm -hmm. I cast out the Canaanites, the Pharisees, and the Philistines before you. Mm -hmm. What shall I yet do more for you, saith the Lord? Okay. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, when you were in the wilderness, in the river of the Amorites, mm -hmm. being athirst and blaspheming my name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemies. He says, I didn't kill you for your blasphemies. This one, this when the Lord winked at ignorance. Go ahead. But cast a tree in the water. He says, listen, I cast a tree in the water to do what? And made the river sweet. Because the water was bitter. Go ahead. What shall I do unto thee, O Jacob? Thou Judah, wouldest not obey me? I will turn me to the other nations. He says, look, he says, what else do I have to do for you? I have done everything for you. What else do I have to do? Would you rather me go to the Moabites? Would you rather me go to the Edomites? Would you rather me be their God? What else do I have to do for you? You have a roof over your head. You have food in your fridge. You have brothers and sisters that love you. What else do I have to do for you? Nah, see, I got to make at least six figures for me to be all right. And I guarantee you, when you make that six figures, you're still going to complain and murmur against the Lord. I guarantee you. Because once you have that spirit in you, you have, to, you have to purge that spirit or at least be able to catch yourself when you're in that spirit. You have to. Go ahead. And unto those will I give my name, mm -hmm. that they may keep my statutes. Seeing what, what, ye have what, forsaken me. What verse you at? 25. 25. Go ahead. Seeing ye have forsaken me. Seeing, seeing that. Seeing. Seeing. Seeing that we have forsaken him. Go ahead. I will forsake you also. Damn. When you desire me to be gracious unto you. Damn. I shall have no mercy upon you. Damn. So now the Lord says, I'm giving you opportunity to call unto me. Instead of murmuring, come to me. Ask for all your wants and needs. I'll provide it. But instead, we choose to murmur and then wish we were back in captivity in Egypt under Pharaoh. The Lord said, you know what? When all this affliction comes upon you, you're going to call me, but I'm not even going to answer. Go ahead. Verse 26. Whensoever ye shall call upon me, I will not hear you, mm -hmm. for ye have defiled your hands with blood. Give me um, Romans 9 and 20. 
<sighs> Romans 9 and 20. Mm, mm, mm. If this book is not about us, I don't know what book is. Dad going to show you no book of the dead. Romans chapter 9. I like the title, but not the, uh, the contents inside. Because we are the walking dead. That's what we are. To have the one true living God. Man, go ahead. Romans chapter 9, verse 20. Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Mm. Shall the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? So now, this is something that we even question the Lord. So not only do we murmur, but we start to question the Most High. Like, why are you even, why are you even call me? Like, I was doing, I was doing what, bad all by myself. Now I got the, because guess what? We don't want to be held accountable. That's why a lot of brothers and sisters stay on the outside. They don't fellowship because they don't want to be held accountable. They don't. Let's go to Psalms 40 and 1. I'm going to speed it up a little bit for time's sake. Psalms 40 and 1. Psalms chapter 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. Whoa. Who that again? I waited patiently for the lord mm -hmm. and he inclined unto me and heard my cry so wait wait so david is actually saying something profound here why because he knows about in order to serve the lord well, it says necessary patience in seeking the most high so you have to be patient so when you when you when you cry unto the lord it doesn't mean he's going to respond right then and there but you are patient enough to wait on your creator you didn't create him he created you so that's why, that's why i read that in romans 9 and 20 we get beside ourselves and start questioning the most high like we he got to explain to us something everything you need to know about the most high is right here in his word anything outside of that you're going off i'm gonna tell you straight you are going off read that again psalms chapter 40 verse 1 i waited patiently for the lord mm -hmm. And he inclined unto me. So now this is when the Lord answers you because you are patient and waiting to hear from him. You're patient and waiting to hear from him. Go ahead. And heard my cry. Mm -hmm. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. So David said, I was on the brink of death. And he brought me up out of that thing. But guess what? Remember, when we start to do good, we tend to forget about the time when the Lord already delivered us. We forget about that. When we're in prosperity, we forgot about the hardship that the Lord delivered us out of. This is why the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. These are the things we meditate on so that we don't slip into that spirit where we're now speaking against the Lord. We're questioning the most high. We're a murmuring. We're blaspheming. You got to be mindful of that spirit. Go ahead. Out of the miry clay uh -huh. and set my feet upon a rock. Mm -hmm. And establish my goings. Go and he hath put a new song in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Even praise unto our God. Mm -hmm. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Blessed is the man. We read it earlier in Isaiah chapter 30. I think we read verse 16. No, 18. Blessed are they that wait upon the Lord. Read that part again. Blessed is that man. That maketh the Lord his trust. So now this is a way of you waiting on the Lord. This is the way that when Moses told the children of Israel to, to wait right here, to wait, to be patient. It's a form of trust. When you go through these afflictions, you go through these issues, you go through these ch life changes, so to speak. When you, when, you, when, you, when you wait patiently upon the Lord, it's showing that you trust he's going to deliver you. It's a form of trust. Go ahead. And respective, not the proud, mm -hmm. nor such as turn aside to lie. Mm -hmm. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, mm -hmm. which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to us word. Mm -hmm. They could not be reckoned up in order unto thee. Mm -hmm. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. So now, if you really want to talk about the acts of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, all the wondrous works of the Lord, David said, I can't even number them. 
He's, he said, it's, it's, even, it's more than what the Bible even tells us. What we have is what we hold fast onto because it's just enough. It's enough for us to learn salvation. It's enough for us to learn how to uh, uh, fix ourselves, fix our families, fix our communities. It's enough for that. We want more than what we have right here. We can't even handle this. We can't even handle something as small as patience. But we want to go to 1,500 other books. Oh, yeah, I need, to, I need to go find the original Dead Sea Scrolls and read it for myself. Why, why we don't read it in another language? We can't even deal with the language we speak with the small things like patience, man, or love your brother as you love yourself. But we, we can't even deal with that. We can't deal with getting your house in order. We can't deal with commanding our house as Abraham commanded his house. We can't even do that. We can't even get a job. Like, come on. But we want to we wanna, we wanna, uh, go, go uh, read the original text. I got to read the original text, my brother. You barely graduated the fifth grade. You barely speak English. You want to go read uh, ancient Hebrew? My Lord. Um, Sirach 2.14. Ecclesiasticus 2.14. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. So the Bible says destruction unto you that has lost patience. Remember we read it in Isaiah 30 when we lost patience and we fled when the Lord told us to not to trust in the Egyptians, it's going to be our shame, so on and so forth. He said, just be patient. The Bible says destruction unto those who lose that patience. When the Lord told us not to make haste in our time of trouble, the Bible says destruction unto them that make haste in time of trouble that don't have patience. Destruction unto them. <clears throat> Luke chapter 7. Oh, sorry, finish that out. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? What shall you do when the Lord shall? What's going to be your explanation? Oh, oh, most high. See, what happened was I thought my way was better than yours. But since you made me in your image, I figured we was on the same playing field. We were equal. We were partners. My road dog. Luke chapter 7, verse 16. Luke. Chapter 7, verse 16. And there came a fear on all, mm -hmm. and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, mm -hmm. and that God has visited his people. Mm -hmm. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea mm -hmm. and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him all of these things. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. And John, calling unto him, Two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come? Hold on one second. Shalom, officer. Most high Christ bless. Hey, you want you want you want daily bread right now, bro. Everybody listen to your conversation. <laughs> all right, all right. Shalom, officer. Most high Christ bless. It's Officer Gerald Ham from Miami. Go ahead, read that again. Verse 19. And John calling unto him. Two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Mm -hmm. When the men were come unto him. I wanted to, I want a reminder about the situations. The situations will have you question the most high, like we just read. It will have you losing patience, so on and so forth. You got to be very mindful of that. Genesis 39. I don't want you to lose that. Don't, don't forget that. So we'll lose our job. We'll get a, a late notice from the mortgage company or the, 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 the uh, your, your landlord. All of a sudden, we lose our minds. I ain't never been late in 25 years in my house. Now I'm late because I'm in this truth. Read Genesis uh, 39, 19. Genesis chapter 39. Verse 19, Come on. and it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which he spake unto him, mm -hmm. saying, after this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him 
and put him into the prison. So now, same situation. John, what he did was he sought out to see if that was Christ, if he was the, 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 the son of God here in the flesh. So what we have is Joseph in a similar situation in prison, right? But go ahead. A place where the king's prisoners were bound, mm -hmm. and he was there in the prison, mm -hmm. verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. And the, the Lord was what? The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph while he was in prison. So I don't know why we think in our affirmities, in our situations, we got a, a, a late rent notice. All of a sudden, we want to make haste. We want to question the most high. We want to murmur, so on and so forth. But the scripture says, in your situation, the Lord is still with you. If you're keeping these commandments, the Lord is still with you. That's it. And you never lose sight of that because the minute you lose sight of that is the minute you start murmuring against the Lord, wishing you were back in Caesar's church, wishing you were back in, 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 in Catholic church being touched by, by daggone priests, man. This is where your mind will revert to. Go ahead. And showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Dang. I remember we did a class the other day, and uh, oh, when I the class, um, it's okay to say hello. And I was dealing with how you deal with the other nations, how you speak to them, so on and so forth. The um, some people said, "Hey, listen, when I dealt with the nations uprightly, they gave me free parking. I saved hundreds of dollars during Passover. I saved this. I got this. I got that because we know how to deal." So now, when you deal with the Lord, it says the Lord actually gave Joseph mercy through the prison guard, through the correction officer. Joseph got mercy from the Lord. Read that again. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph mm -hmm. and showed him mercy. Come on. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. In the sight of the keeper of the prison. So that means Joseph didn't receive harsh treatment, didn't receive the whippings and the lashings and the and the and the and the bad food that others may have gotten. Joseph received favor. Go ahead. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. So not only, not only did Joseph get favor, but he said he, he entrusted Joseph with basically governing all the prisoners. Look, this is how, listen, some bro there's brothers that had to serve time in prison for things they might have done in the world. And they, had, they, got, they got certain benefits as well where they were able to bring all the brothers together and start teaching a class. What? Read that again. Verse 22. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. Now, and what we won't do, we'll say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in prison because of something I did in the world. Why is God letting me go to jail for this? Yada, yada, yada. But what you might not even think about or cross your mind is, there's someone in that prison that's one of the elect that the Most High has got to reach. And guess what? Who's going to be that person to reach him? It's going to be you. So oftentimes we look at our situation, we lose patience in the Lord because our situation has now changed. But not saying, wait a minute, this is actually changing for the betterment for somebody else. Guess what? It ain't always about you. I, I, I got I to gotta say that. It's not always about you. We have to remember that. So you have to serve six months, whatever, right? So now you in there. It's time to do the work. It's time to do the work. Go ahead. Verse 23. I'll read 22. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand mm -hmm. all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Mm -hmm. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So it says that the keeper of the prison didn't even check up on Joseph to see what he was doing. He said, look, go ahead, handle your business. I know you're a man of the Lord. Do your thing. He didn't even check up on Joseph to see what if Joseph was doing something like he was trying to break out. It's not a... He was like, yo, I'm not checking if it's going to be a prison break. 
because I know the Lord is with you. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. We're almost done. Almost. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. Come on. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, mm -hmm. not knowing the things that shall befall me there, mm -hmm. save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, mm -hmm. saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me. Verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. So it says, none of these things about the afflictions, the bonds, the threats of jail, so on and so forth, Paul said, none of these things move me. Go ahead. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. He says, I don't want to count my life as my own. Like, I don't consider my life precious unless I'm doing the work of the Lord. Go ahead. So that I might finish my course with joy mm -hmm. in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Uh -huh. Wherefore, I take you to record this day. To record this day. To record this day uh -huh. that I am pure from the blood of all men. Go ahead. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He says, for I have not held back to declare unto you all the counsels of God. Go ahead. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers mm -hmm. to feed the church of God, mm -hmm. which he hath purchased with his own blood. So now, Paul, in the earlier verses, mentioned all the things that were going to befall him. He says, I don't want to count my own life as precious. But at the end of the day, in all of this, the only thing precious about my life is I'm able to do the work while I'm still breathing. Read verse 28 again. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. So now the, it says the, the laws of God have made you overseers. Why? Because we're supposed to keep the commandments and teach the commandments. You are overseers. Go ahead. To feed the church of God. So now it's your job to feed the church of God, to give all things that are wanting, to make sure the people are getting the spiritual understanding getting their souls fed as wet as they're in, 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 if they're in need of, of, of food, to have their stomach fed. Y'all got to make sure that stuff is done. Go ahead. Which he had purchased with his own blood. Now, let's jump to us, us, Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11 and 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, mm -hmm. nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, mm -hmm. even so thou knowest not the works of God who make it all. So now it says the way a child grows in the womb of a sister or uh, the way of the spirit. It says you don't know. You don't know all the ways of the Lord. That's why, I, that's why I mentioned earlier about he gave us this portion right here, this Bible, the Apocrypha. That's our portion. He hasn't told us everything. That's why, that's why we know in part and we prophesy in part because he has not given us every bit of understanding on the planet. He gave us this portion in this life. Continue to read. Verse 6. In the morning, sow thy seed. Mm -hmm. In the morning, what? Sow thy seed. So with with with. The bit of knowledge that you do have, with the bit of understanding, with the bit of charity, so on and so forth, that you do have, it says, in the morning, sow thy seed, meaning still do the work. With what you have, do the work. Go ahead. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, mm -hmm. or whether they both shall be alike good. So now... Paul says, listen, your, our job, not Paul, excuse me, Solomon says, it's, it's our job to do the work. We don't know if it's going to prosper or not, but we're just going to do the work. Let me give you an example. Imagine if Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Kanai, uh, Deacon Yahweh, so in the early inceptions of, the, of IUIC, if they would have said, you know what, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to reach 
five hundred people in this truth. Let's let's just dismantle this and stop it. We'll just learn at home, just us. We're gonna keep this understanding to ourselves. Imagine that. So now, when you had a Passover with twenty five hundred people, if they weren't about doing the work, despite their situations, despite their tribulations, there wouldn't be an IUIC. Makes sense, right? The truth, the truth could be hindered. When you have those that don't keep their eyes on the mission, they lose patience because the Lord didn't tell them something right now. No, the Lord says, listen, you're going to go through it. You're going to go through it on your job. You're going to go through it at, the, at school. You're going to have to be the one doing all the labors. Like, many people don't know. Bishop Nathaniel was the one who used to edit the videos. There was no editors. He used to create all of the, the digital stuff and all of that. This, but then what happened? The Lord saw that they were faithful in doing the work. He said, I'm going to send more labels. Then he sent another brother who knows how to edit videos. Another brother who knows how to work the camera. A sister who knows how to sew garments. So on and so forth. And what you see is because you're faithful in sowing the seed, that the Most High gave that increase. He sent forth laborers. The vi the, listen, the, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. The Most High said, okay, I'm proving these men. They're approved because guess what? They're going through it and they're still about doing the work. That's how we got to be. We can't lose patience because our situation changes or our, uh, uh, or our, uh, Move, our, our mood changes. Some of us only serve the Lord according to our mood. If I'm in a good mood today, yeah, I'll go to Sabbath. If I'm not in a good mood, yeah, I'm not going to Sabbath. Craziness. Read to verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 7. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, Yet, let him remember the days of darkness. That's what we read in Sirach earlier. In your prosperity, remember your, your, your days of, of, of need, of want. And in your days of need and want, uh, remember your times when you were prosperous. Go ahead. For they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. It says so that they should be many because all that cometh is all vain. Last scripture, Romans 5 and 3. We're going to end it there. Read verse 3 to verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And Hold on. So the things that we go through is what actually helps us to grow patient in the Lord. So the time when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and they were without food, that was to teach them patience. I hope y'all understand that. The time when John the Baptist was in prison, that was to teach him patience. Joseph was to teach him patience. Jeremiah, patience. The times when the apostles gave up everything to follow Christ, it was to teach them patience. Read it again. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We glory in those tribulations because what? I'm without, remember, one said they wanted to go bury, let me go bury my father. Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. You see that? Because my father just died, but the Lord said, listen, hey, do this work, man. Do this work. So we're supposed to glory in those tribulations because now, that's where you draw your strength from even more so to go do the work of the Lord. Because guess what? You want to see your father again. You want to see your mother again. So you go do the work so that all your spiritual fathers and mothers can get uh, 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 their entrance to the kingdom. And you'll be a spiritual mother or father to many that you're going to help win over. Go ahead. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation teaches patience. This is what the children of Israel did not learn in the wilderness. Go ahead. And patience, experience. And patience gives you experience. And experience, hope. And experience teaches hope. Go ahead. And hope maketh not ashamed. And hope, you will never be ashamed in having your hope in the Lord because you have everything that came before that. The experience, the patience, 
led you up to having hope in the Lord. Go ahead. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. What verse is that? Verse 5. Go ahead. Finish it out. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. All praise to the Most High. So I'm going to end it right there. Um, I actually went over longer than I was planning. But all praise to the Most High. I pray the class was edifying. I pray brothers and sisters learn something. I pray that we all can apply the word of God to get ourselves right, families right, communities right, nation right. That's how we're going to do this. It's not going to be uh, some magical snapping of the fingers saying Shazam. We're going to get it right, though. All right? Um, right, right. We got we to keep that patient, God. Got to keep that pitch. Hey, uh, Brother Mishael, thank you for scribing. Somebody else has scribed earlier, too. But thank you as well. Um, Lord's will, we get the Periscope up and running for, for Monday's Daily Bread. Lord's will, I don't know. We'll see, but we'll be on Facebook Live, all right? So with that, Israel, Shalom, Most High Christ, bless you all. Shalom.